Hey everybody! Welcome, welcome! Hi Christina! How's everybody doing? Hi Katerina! Um, so while everybody's kind of jumping on, I will do... <laughs> I'm alive too. It's getting towards the end of the day and having uh, two, two crazy toddlers can get pretty exhausting. But we're here. Um, anyway, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Elizabeth Viltry. I am the head of events um, for the Maternal Mental Health and Wellness Network. Uh, super, super excited to be launching this and we have such a great lineup. Um, for these Instagram lives for the rest of the week. So I hope you guys continue um, to come. It's really, really awesome. Looking forward to speaking with Sarah Lynn Ward. Um, we're, we're just waiting on her. So whenever she comes, I'll have her join in. Um, she's from the Mama Sagas. She'll tell us a little bit more about that. We're gonna talk about working from home, um, dealing with kids. Um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. So uh, really, really excited. It's been, um, you know, something that I can definitely relate to. It's been very, very hard um, working from home while dealing with, with having kiddos. So, okay. So she's coming. She's coming. She's rocking her baby. Totally get it. I am, I am rocking the uh, earphones today because my kids are making a lot of noise in the toy room that's right next door. So hopefully that'll take some of the noise out a little bit. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm also rocking, uh, if you tuned into uh, Lisa's discussion this morning, she talked about, I think it was this morning. The days are kind of blending in together. She talked about her hair. Um, not blowing it out and I'm rocking that too um, so so I am a um, board certified dance movement therapist and an expert in perinatal uh, mood and anxiety disorders um, so I have um, opened a private practice it's called here for you mama um, so it's a, a perinatal body-based psychotherapy practice um, Awesome. Here she is. Let me. Right. Here is Sarah Lynn. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi Sarah Lynn. How are you? I'm good. This little guy does not want to oh take a nap. Goodness. <laughs> oh, but he's so cute. He Thank can join. You. And I mean, this is reality. So it is. <laughs> It is. I was just saying before you came on that I, uh, my, my kids are in the playroom, which is right next door in the room that I am in and, uh, they're making a ton of noise. So I was like, headphones, hopefully nobody yeah. will hear it. But my, my other life, two right? are in the other line as well, or in the other room as well. So yeah, I mean, you <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do, right? Exactly. If this whole, this whole experience of the quarantine and being home together and trying to work and do school and everything all at once has been such a lesson in, just being patient with myself, I feel like, yeah. more than yes. anything else. Yes, and I feel like it's given and everyone me, else. yeah, 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 and it's given me such um, awareness of how much other professionals do, you know, like teaching, like teachers, I'm like, I wow, know. I give you guys so much credit <laughs> for what I you know. do. Can you, ima can you oh. imagine, like, a whole classroom of, oh, no. I can't even, no way. I can't no imagine, way. No way. how old are your kids? Um, so I have, I have two. So Addison will be three at the end of the month. And then mm -hmm. Jack just turned one in March. Okay. Yeah. How about nice. yourself? I have a seven year old who's in first grade and a four year old who just wants to do everything her sister does. And of oh, yeah. course yeah. is bored because no one's playing with her. Sure. And then this little guy <laughs> who's going to be four months old this weekend. Oh my gosh. He's so high. cute. He's super Bye -bye. curious. Say hi. Adorable, adorable. <laughs> All right, so let's let's jump on in. So, how about you talk a little bit about the Mama Sagas before we get into, um, sure. you know, uh, talking about working from home. So I started the Mama Sagas. Well, I I started it after my second child was born, but it 
was the, the result of an idea I had when I was a brand new mom with my first baby. Um, she was really struggling to breastfeed. She was tongue tied. She had reflux and mm. she was like, we had a lot of really late long nights and yeah. I live in Colorado and okay. all of my family is in New York. So mm. all of our family is on the East coast. And um, I had like no one to call and I just felt like completely isolated. I was living so far away and I couldn't, you can't call your pediatrician at two in the morning. You can't call your lactation right. consultant at two in the morning. Right. So I just remember feeling like I wished there was something I had in the palm of my hand that would mm -hmm. give me quick ideas from other moms who've been there, like quick answers to problems I was having, um, things I could try to help calm the baby, support to feel like I wasn't alone, um, all of those things. So it really was at first just the passion project. I started a blog, which was the oh, Mom okay. Sangas, and we did a yeah. bunch of videos. Um, and I was really interested in hearing first person accounts of other moms challenges and how they overcame them. Mm -hmm. So that's really where the idea started. And then um, I have a background in fitness. And so I started really diving into pelvic floor physical therapy and um, getting to know more of the health side of things as well. Um, and so I started pulling in experts to kind of contribute their content. Um, and I wanted people who were like relatable and nine times out of 10, the experts I feature are also moms because I think awesome. it's really powerful to have a mom help another mom. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So then ultimately what ended up happening is last year I developed an app to support the content even further mm -hmm. because I wanted it to be able to be accessible quicker and easier for moms to be able to, to get like I had originally intended in the palm of their hand. So yep. now instead of waiting for people to search and find it, they can go right to the app and it, it'll be there. So every awesome. month I change, I change out the content and it's called the Better After Baby app. Awesome. 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 Yeah. yeah an app is definitely, uh, you know, with, with having with kids and, and being uh, busy, it's, it's much easier sometimes to go on an app and look, right? Yes. Absolutely. Well, yeah. And also I, I just felt like you know, there was a gap in the app that I saw. Mm -hmm. content. There's not a lot of like um, other content for moms that is available on the app on that. Like, um, like I said, pelvic floor physical therapy um, information or like sleep consultants who are giving advice and tips. Or we have doulas and nannies and um, OBGYNs who contribute and pediatricians who contribute. And so I just really wanted to like make a comprehensive resource that was like one stop shop. If you need information about your baby, great. If you need information about your mental health, great. Whatever the mm -hmm. information is. And I wanted it to, I see myself as like a conduit. So I just like pull in all of the information available and try to push it back out. So I, I think you might be blocking the mic on your phone. <laughs> there we go. All right. That sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, much better. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Well, super exciting so glad to have you so Thanks. let's 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 start let's talk about working from home during yeah. this during this pandemic and and trying to juggle all of these other roles at the same time yeah i think it's a blessing and a curse um i'll say what i think is long overdue is for employers and society to realize that we as moms cannot separate out our different roles. It's impossible for me to go to work and pretend I'm not a mom. And it's right. impossible for me to come home to my kids and not think about things that I still have to do at work. We mm -hmm. are complex human beings and our identities are very much intertwined and should be. I think when moms struggle the most, it's when we're asked to put part of ourselves on hold. Sure. And if, yeah. we're, if we're not able to go to work in a place that supports my role as parent and knows that I'm going to have to leave sometimes to take care of a sick kid, or I'm going to mm -hmm. have to take a phone call here and there. Yeah. That's when we struggle, right? So one of the things that I think has been a blessing that has come out of this whole experience with quarantine is that people are now forced to recognize that what, who we are and what we are is more than just one dimensional, um, roles that we play mm -hmm. at different times in our day, right? Yeah. Like me as a mom having this conversation now is the same person who is waking up before my kids get up so I can focus on my work or 
um, you know, it's, it, we're, we're so much more complex than what we are allowed to portray. And yeah. I think that it's really important that now people are starting to see that. Mm -hmm. I, I, when, when you started talking about it, I, it brought up feelings that I used to have when, when I was, um, I used to work in a hospital and I remember feeling so guilty taking that half an hour just to go pump when I was yes. at work. And I was like, Oh, I feel so bad. Like I should be working, blah, blah, blah. And you know, this, this definitely opened my eyes to being like, you know what? No, I yes. am a mom. Like I deserve that time to do this. And right. Um, so for sure, it's definitely and shifted perspectives. I even now feel like, I mean, I work, I'm very lucky because my, my nine to five job, I work as an editor for Healthline and I work on the parenthood side of things. So all of the people I work with are parents, except for yep. one. And uh, most all of them are moms. And so they get it. But still, I find myself going into meetings when I have a baby on my lap and apologizing. And I'm like, why mm. am I apologizing? I should mm -hmm. not be apologizing for this. This is everyone's reality right now. Yeah. This is um, how it should be. It should be acceptable for us to put our families first and to, you know, integrate everything. So um, I am hopeful that what's going to come out of this in the long term, and not just for moms, but for dads too, because... Yep. You know, one of the things that I find really frustrating is that my husband has um, a demanding job. He's a middle school principal. And oh a gosh. lot of times, yeah, he's in meetings all day wow. long. But the thing that's frustrating is like a lot of times it's not as acceptable for him to pull kids into the meeting with him. Not yep. just, not, not all the time. Like he's, it's still okay with some people, but like if he's on a call with his boss, he's hesitant to do it. And it right. has made both he and I realize that the expectation is still different. Like yep. it's way more acceptable for me to have a kid on my lap than it is for him. Right. And why is that? Right. We're, we're all in this together right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, definitely. So I'm that's hopeful a, that things like that will change. I hope so too. I, re I really, really hope so. Yeah, absolutely. How do you think after all of this, after all of this is done and we're able to go back to work, like how, how do you, how do you think this is going to change just yeah. mothers or, and, and fathers? And well, for the, I, was, uh, I have two, I have two thoughts. I think there's things that will change for the better. And then there's things that I worry about. Um, um, number one, things that I think will change for the better. I think that we're going to start to be more acceptable or more accepting of, working parents being able to work remotely when they need to, mm -hmm. if they have to work remotely um, because they have a sick child at home, I think there will be more tolerance for that in a lot of different places. I also think a lot of businesses might realistically re like come to the conclusion that it makes more sense for them to have remote workers on a more permanent basis. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It opens up a hiring market. Like you can hire someone who lives thousands of miles away from you and get the best of the best, you know? Yep. So there's, there, are, I think, I think there are some ways that things are going to improve. Um, yeah. A couple of ways that I worry about is the balance of work and um, non-work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. one of the challenges of working remotely is that you have to be very diligent about turning it off. Yes. Because there's no separation of work and home. So yeah. like my dining room table is where we eat and it's where we do our work. And it's where, you know, if we're not careful, we could all be on our devices all day long. And that mm -hmm. as a family is not good. Right. So I think there's going to have to be a certain sense of ownership over what works for your family in terms of like screen time limits, device rules, um, working together as a unit to make sure that we're all participating in the family dynamic and not just escaping to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, like things like that will have to be worked out. But I'm hopeful yeah. that I'm hopeful that this will actually benefit working parents in the long run. Definitely. Um, I I was just thinking. I, I I've been working from home too. I'm a therapist, so um, I I've been trying to find the little silver lining in in this whole pandemic, and I am able to reach um, moms from from anywhere and not not just based in Connecticut where I, where I live. So that is a little, little plus, but I was thinking of, I, I've been doing my work right at, we have like a, 
a kitchen kitchen counter bar area and mm-hmm. that's where my daughter and my son eat their breakfast in the morning and that's where I'm having the computer so it's like they're they're blurring the yeah. lines between like oh this is where we enjoy enjoy our meals but mom seems really busy and and really stressed so yeah it's it's almost like what's going on we had a rule for the longest time no devices at the table because Mm -hmm. like whenever we were sitting at the table we were eating dinner as a family or doing whatever so we even for the grown-ups and actually mostly for the grown-ups because our kids don't aren't they're not old enough to have their own phones yet or Mm -hmm. anything like that but it was always the rule was no phones at the table And um, now it's a little, I noticed that we are naturally bending that and without realizing it. And I think part of it is because that's where we do our work during the day and it kind of spills over into the evening hours. But also the thing that's challenging as a working parent working remotely with kids at home, well, one of the things, because there's many things that are challenging. (laughs) Yep. One of the things is that there is no separation of week and weekend because whatever you don't get done during the week working hours, you have to do on the weekend. Yes. So yeah. it just feels like it just like never ends and every day runs into the next because it's just like, okay, the kids are occupied. I'm going to do 30 minutes of work. Okay. The yeah. kids are not occupied. They need my help. So I'm going to turn off work. And it's just that constant back and forth. So that's what I'm saying. I think we are all as individuals and as family units going to have to come to some kind of like working agreement with Mm -hmm. where the limits are. We're going to have to set our own boundaries because Mm -hmm. otherwise it just will become one big mess of a like working all the time. (laughs) Yeah. I read an article um, the other day saying that um, people are working significantly more than 40 hours a week being at home. And I think that's so true because you're able to, like you said, you're able to go- log on and do some work on a weekend or at nighttime. Right. Oh. I know. My daughter's let, crying. Let me know if you need to Michael run grab out. Her. I get, I no, it's okay. Get it. It's okay. She can. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. pull her in. To, to that point, though, what you were saying, I think um, the, on the flip side of it, that's also beneficial for working moms in particular, because one of the complaints I've always had working in traditional work situations is that there was no flexibility in time. Like yeah. now you have no choice. Like people have to understand that work gets done outside of nine to five. Yes. I mean, like I get my best work done between the hours of six and nine in the morning because that's okay. before anyone else is awake and like doing stuff. Yeah. So I'm the I opposite. Can... Evening. Okay. Nighttime yeah, after I, after bedtime. I after can't I go do to bed. That. I Yep. I'm a morning person, so like I have to I can't put a sentence together after like four o'clock. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so so oh, I, I think that's important for people to kind of figure out like one of my tips I would say for any working parents who are trying to juggle all of this and be at home is to find a chunk of your day where you can devote entirely to what you need to do and what will make you feel like you've accomplished your goals for the day. So for me, that's before anyone wakes up and it's easier for me to wake up early. Like even before this all happened, I would get up well before the baby was born, I would get up at four 30 to get stuff done before the day, just because I can do that. I feel better about waking up. It's harder for me to stay up late. So, but if you're on a night person, you know, do it, devote some time to yourself after the kids go to bed or if you have a partner who's also working at home they can take the lunchtime hour with the kids or like go on a bike ride or do whatever so you can get that one chunk of time where it's Mm -hmm. only about you and what you want to accomplish and then I think that helps you feel more grounded in the rest of the day she come in come on in all right hi (laughs) say hi Mom. Oh no! Don't Aww. be sad. It's okay. <laughs> this is this is life, right? Uh huh. <laughs> Don't be sad. Do you want to go sit? Okay. Um. So we had a good question pop up. It says, "Yeah, how do you how do you manage all the roles? Teacher, mom, wife, work." Um. I don't. I think the answer is I don't manage all the roles. I do all the roles, and I realize that. I'm not going to be perfect at any one of them. Yep. I think it's not so much about trying to succeed at all of them. It's about doing the best you can with it all and realizing that there are going to be times, moments, days, 
when you feel like you can't succeed at all of them and that that's okay because actually yes. what we're being asked to do is literally impossible anyone can succeed at all of those roles simultaneously in, a, in any given day it's just not possible right so i think once i got to that realization and allowed like forgave myself that's when i was able to manage it quote unquote because i was able yes. to give myself the forgiveness and the grace i needed to yep yep um but in terms of like some tactical things i think the things that helped me are number one carving out that chunk of time where it's only, i'm the only one around and i have silence that helps me get a head start on my work. The yep. other thing is always, um, this is, I call this, oh, <laughs> go ahead if you need to. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I call it, coming. <laughs> okay. I call it the lesson of the, the baby who won't nap, this guy. Um, one of the things I think any mom who's ever had a young baby knows is like, if you try to rush the nap time routine, like if you rock them and then you try to put them down too soon, they wake right back up and they're like yep, startled yep. and then it takes twice as long to get them down, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's almost better to just take your time the first time you do it because you'll actually, it'll take less time in the long run. So what I've realized is that's the same with my older kids too. Like mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. my older kids are doing their schoolwork at the table, and she's struggling to get through something, if I'm multitasking and only half helping her, she's gonna, it's gonna take so much longer to get through it. She's gonna get frustrated, I will get frustrated. It's almost better for me to push pause on whatever I'm doing, go help her yep. and focus 100% on that, and then get her to a point where she feels confident and then step back to it. So I think the managing of the roles is really about being able to push pause and switch gears quickly. Yeah, and so, yeah. And, and give your full attention to one thing at a time and realize the rest can wait. So it's, it's yeah. a priority, priorities game and just a pause. I always think of myself as push, pause, push, play, push, pause, mm -hmm. push, play. Yes, which, which can be incredibly difficult too because I, I find myself, you know, if, if I'm checking out of work and focusing on the kids and then something does pop up and I have to leave and the kids mm -hmm. don't understand that all of a sudden mommy has to go do work, it's like an incre yeah. incredible amount of guilt of like, oh my gosh, you know, I feel so bad. They don't. So um, yeah. it's definitely, it's, it's hard. And it, I, we are trying not to just put them in front of a screen. It's happened because there's sometimes there's no other way around it, but sure. we try to save sure. that for times when, um, when we're both occupied. So mm -hmm. friend or like, my older daughter has certain videos she has to watch for her remote schoolwork and okay. we will okay. save those. We won't do them right. Like in the order that the teacher gives it to her, we'll save the videos for whenever I know I have a meeting or when my husband has a meeting. Yeah. And I think yeah. the other piece of it is That's if perfect. you do have a partner at home who is willing to work with you, the most important thing you can do is communicate with each other because I, yep. I feel like, you know, there's a lot of jokes and memes going around about like quarantine babies or quarantine divorces. And I totally yeah. get it because there are times where I want to pull my hair out. <laughs> but at the, on the yes. flip side, I feel like my husband and I have been forced into a, uh, like, we have to communicate now. We yeah. have yeah. no choice because yeah. we will not survive if we don't. Yep. And so we've been forced to communicate and it's been really good for us because we've been really like having to, to work together. In a way yeah, that we've never yeah. had to before. Yep, my husband and I actually make it a point every morning to share with each other what we have going on during that day. So mm -hmm. you know, he knew that I was doing this at this time. He, I knew that he was in a meeting this morning. So we're actually learning even more about each other's professions through this. Yes. Like I'm learning about things about his job that I never knew, and vice versa. So it actually yeah. is kind of nice, and and we're improving on our communication with each other too. All, I agree. You know what point, else I, so. I think is interesting. Um, like one of the very first weeks of this quarantine, uh, my husband, I, again, I told you before, he's a middle school principal. I heard him on a call with his staff and he was like leading the call. And after everyone spoke, he said, I really appreciate you. Thank you for all that you do. And I was like, like he never said that to me. <laughs> I, 
And so it was like, wait a minute. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. but it led to a really good conversation because after that call, I said to him, so I really, and I was like, how do I phrase this? So it doesn't just start a fight. <laughs> so I said, I really, really liked hearing you on your call today. Cause I got to hear a side of you. I never hear. And I was like, I, I really like how you said, I appreciate you to your staff. I thought that was really sweet. And I was like, I wish you would say that to me more often. And then he was like, huh. And I kind of like made him think. And so yeah. that, that was a really positive, like communication thing that happened for us. And I feel like it's made a huge difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, I think it's important, especially during this time to be able to find those little glimmers of, of positivity and, and, yeah. you know, things. Um, Cause it, you can definitely get sucked into what, ooh, anything pretty much. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's been, so what would you say if you had to, if you had to choose one thing, one form of self-care that you've been doing while juggling this, um, mm -hmm. what, what would you say you do? Um, so my, I, I'm, I'm big into meditation, but nice. I can't nice. meditate right now because I can't sit down and find any quiet, peace and quiet to myself. Yeah. So yeah. what I've done is I've had to change how I meditate. So I actually found some walking meditations, which is really just like positive affirmations set to music. Nice. And I put them, nice. in, I put them on my phone, put my headphones in when he's ready to take a nap and I put him in the stroller and my big girls get on their bikes and we go for a walk. And that's like, that has been my primary source. I do it every day. It's been my primary source of self care. It entertains the kids. It keeps him, it gives him a nap because mm -hmm. one of the, one of the things that I think is so funny is like, he's the third baby and he doesn't like, he's used to being on the go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's he's the best in the car seat and no one ever told him that we're not allowed to go anywhere anymore. <laughs> oh. So, I've had so the walks are definitely... Yeah, needed. I've had to find ways to get him in the car seat just so he'll take a nap sometimes. Yep. So the walk has been huge for that. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's good for me. And it really just like walking in general just clears my head. The music, the positive affirmations help me put me in an elevated space instead of being stuck in like the, you know, the stress of the day. Yeah. And then getting my kids outside where they're like active and getting their energy out. All of those things together. That is my self-care right now. Yeah, exactly. We've been doing walks as well. And um, that that is the the time where all all work is shut off. You mm -hmm. know, we take we take the kids we go outside. So it's it's, it's really, it's really great. And yeah. being outside is is so nice, especially when yeah. the weather's nice. Do you I have know. nice weather in Colorado? Yes. And I yeah, yeah it was like 80 and sunny for the last <gasps> few days. And I would say that um, I, I keep saying, like, I'm so glad that this happened in the spring and not like yes. as we're going into winter and, you know, things are getting darker. And thank God yeah. that we're all homebound in the spring. I know. I know. I know. You have a lot exactly. to say. Exactly. Chatty, chatty. He is chatty. <laughs> um, let me think. Let me think. This was really, really great. Um, and you, and you brought up really good, really good pointers with everything. Oh, um, it's been, it, I, I found that just the transition, you know, I was so, I was at home in the morning, I would go to work, I would leave work at work and then I'd come home. So I was very mm -hmm. disconnected when I came home and I made sure I stayed disconnected. Um, and now every, like you said, everything's kind of blurring together and you have to, you have to create those boundaries almost again in just a very yeah. different way. And, um, <clears throat> I have a, um, I'm, I'm slowly building a, a home office space in our, in our house. So we just moved not too long ago. So, so I'm, I'm building one. So hopefully I'll uh, be able to kind of, you know, uh, create that boundary almost and, and mm -hmm. give that a, find that space. Let's see. We've got another question. Uh, what is the biggest tip you would say to a working mama? That's a good one. Um, well, uh, without repeating what I said already, so I, I will repeat what I said already. The, the, definitely giving yourself grace and forgiveness and realizing you're not going to be able to do everything perfectly. Um, allowing yourself to be human and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. 
Mm -hmm. But I would say also, um, and carving out time for yourself, but mo most of all, I think the whole oxygen mask situation and analogy is really important, putting on your own oxygen mask first. Um, whether or not we put ourselves in the position, we as moms set the tone for the family. Like mm -hmm. the kids are looking to us to see how we react to something and then that's how they generally react. Um, a lot of times our husbands are just, or partners are, you know, they're, hopefully they're there and they're supportive, but a lot of times they still are looking for us to set the cue of like how, mm -hmm. how the family is going to function, right? Um, I think also just in general, one thing I've learned about my personal situation with my husband is that I'm a natural multitasker and he is not. And I don't know if that's a man thing or if that's just a him thing. But, I think it's a man thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think what that shows me is that like, that's the reason why for us as moms, a lot of times all of the things fall on our shoulders. That's equally what makes us mo the most overwhelmed and stressed. But I think if we can put our own oxygen mask on first and figure out ways to take care of ourselves before we take care of everyone else, whether yep. that's yep. like getting up in the morning or whether that's going for a run or whether that's taking 30 minutes to yourself to focus 100% on what you want so that you can then share your focus around for the rest of the day. Those are the things that I think we have to do. And a lot of times it's this putting ourselves first, we feel guilty about. Mm -hmm. But I, I think mm -hmm. that that's actually the most important thing you can do as a mom, because then when you come back to helping everyone else and being there for everyone else, whether it's your employer or your kids or your spouse, then you can give them the attention that they crave and that you want to give them without feeling yep. resentful yep. that exactly. you haven't exactly. filled your own tank. So yep. I think, you know, for any mom, whether or not you're working, fill your own tank first so that then you can, you can give to everyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you fill that tank, you'll be better, stronger, you know, yeah. you name it so much yeah. better. Awesome. Awesome. This was amazing. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> so, good. so much for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Have a um, good oh. rest of your, oh, oh, we got, we've got one more. What if you only have five minutes for yourself? What can self-care look like in super short increments? That's a great yes. question. Okay. Here's what, this is a great question. Here's what I do. If I have five minutes and it doesn't even have to be it, like, what if I don't even have space to myself? What if I'm in the car or in the shower or I'm doing something else? Here's what mm -hmm. I do. I take a minute to close my eyes and I take very deep breaths until I feel my heart rate slow down. Once I take those deep breaths, then I start going through the list of all the things that I am grateful for. Uh, and it can be something super mundane. I am thankful for my pillow. I am thankful mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. my, um, it, you know, and, and do this when you are really upset, when somebody makes you angry, when you're feeling really low, because the quickest path to feeling positive is to play the appreciation game and start thinking about all the ways that you um, are all the things that make you happier that that you are grateful for. So I start with very small things. I start with I'm, I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for this fleece because it's keeping me warm. I'm grateful mm -hmm. for the sunshine outside because it makes me feel better. Um, and then just go through as many things as you can. Once you get to that place where you feel calmer and that you feel like you've had enough of the appreciation to make you in a positive mental state, then you can turn off your brain, go for a walk or do whatever you need to do. Go outside, dig in the dirt. If you're a gardener and yep. let the answer of whatever you're concerned about come to you. Cause it yeah. will. but a lot of yeah. times you have to get out of the negative self talk and then into this place of stillness in your brain. Yeah. I found even the simple simple act of reframing the way I think about taking a shower, you know, yeah. rather than just thinking like, Oh, I got to get myself clean. Oh, I only have five minutes until the kids, you know, come barging in rather mm -hmm. than thinking of just that, just thinking of how, you know, Oh, the water's nice and warm. This is really yes. relaxing. And then, you know, almost doing what you just talked about. So it's almost yeah. like you can, you can really train your brain in any way in, in mm -hmm. uh, how to implement, you know, some sort of, um, meditation or a way, way to express gratitude for yourself throughout the day. And it doesn't necessarily Definitely. have to take up, you know, 
a lot of guided meditations I see on YouTube are like 15, 20 minutes long. So right. that's, that's a long time. So right. um, if you don't have that, if you don't have that amount of time, you know, finding something that you can do. Um, music is a huge one for me too. just popping in mm -hmm. my earphones sometimes and, and listening to some of my favorite songs, even while I'm yeah. working with the kids or playing with the kids has yes. been really helpful too. I agree with that. I actually um, started a new technique this week where when my first grader starts to get frustrated with the amount of schoolwork or mm -hmm. when my four year old is frustrated because nobody is able to play with her and everybody's working. I put everyone on pause and we put on one song and we just dance it out and we just awesome. get the wiggles out and dance as much as we can. The other thing that works really well with that is um, cleaning up. Like mm -hmm. if you, I, I got so frustrated of being the only one that was picking up after f five different people who live in this house. And yeah. <laughs> I was like, I can't keep doing this. So I started making it a game where we put on a song and I usually pick a really long one. <laughs> or <laughs> to get them <laughs> yeah I like I'm like it. okay everyone's gonna pick up for the entire length of this song keep <laughs> putting stuff away whatever you can find shoes whatever everything yeah so I'll do either that or I'll set the timer on the microwave and for 10 minutes and it's amazing when everybody pitches in for 10 minutes what you can get done versus what I can get done when I'm trying yeah. to do everything else yep. yeah I even um hold on my oh, my little you. girl's three so there he is. Hi, buddy. <laughs> I sing a song. I, I made up a cleaning song about putting things away. So she even understands that, like, oh, we have to clean up. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I like that. You should, uh, you could use, like, Bohemian Rhapsody. That's a really long exactly. song, right? Stairway <laughs> exactly. to Heaven. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Let's see. Does anybody have any, did I miss any questions? Let's see. Ooh, um, somebody said, I wake up much earlier than the, the kids to have my quiet me time. I may get so much done and no distractions. That's a really, really good one. Even finding the time to sip your coffee by yourself, right? Yes. Love. Be, I love that can be, first um, coffee in the morning. That's something. Morning. Right? Right? Uh -huh. I know. It sets, it sets the tone for the rest of the day. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I don't, I'm not sure I see any other questions. Let me uh, oh. make sure as I'm scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> this was really, really good. And you, like I said, you gave some amazing pointers, some good takeaways oh, because, because who knows how much longer, you know, I don't, I don't know what it's I like in, in Colorado, but here in, here in Connecticut, we're, not really sure when this is all going to lift and we're going to be able to go back to the office and, and I know, you know, um, so it's, it's really yeah. important to kind of find, find ways to deal with this and cope with it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. While we're here. And I think, um, and you know, I think this is important for all of us who work in the mental health advocacy space to think about too. Um, we are starting to lift re restrictions here in Colorado. Okay. But that comes, that brings with it a whole nother set of anxieties for a lot of people, um, myself included. Like, I feel like I've gotten, I just finally now feel like we've gotten used to this. And now yep. we're starting to think about going back and what does it look like? And, and like, I was thinking about how my oldest daughter really wants to go on a sleepover. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that right now. Like, I'm I know. kind of scared to send yes. her to go sleep at her friend's house. And it's like, uh -huh. There's a whole nother set of stuff we're going to have to deal with now yes. when things start to reopen. No, absolutely. I was just, um, I forget what my husband and I were saying about, oh, even just having like picnics. We're like, yeah. are we going to have birthday parties? Are we going to be able yeah. to like go on vacation and sit at the beach? And, and it's right. so, you know, it's surreal that we have to think about it like that. But we have to. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's just the way the way the cookie crumbles right no it's been so, what's going to be on continued to be continued thank you so so much for joining me thank you i appreciate hope you it. have a great rest of your evening thanks and, you too uh, hopefully we'll chat soon this was yes, great I can't wait it was awesome. talk to you later all right, all right. Bye. Thank you so bye thanks everybody for joining